What's up everyone, Juno here, and welcome back to a new album review. And today it's not only an album, it's actually a multimedia sort of event, and it's Storybook, organized by the Form Collective, mostly known for their all-nighter compilations and telephone from last year. So how does this work? Well, it's actually a really, really interesting concept. So you have a team of 10 writers each writing their own stories and then you get a team of visual artists on each team that create an artwork based on the story and then a team of musicians that craft some really great songs that represent the narrative of the story and the beauty of the art and yeah actually that's the first event organized by form that I have writers and yeah okay i was really really interested in how this would actually come to play and well it's now out so let's take a look since we got a ton of artists involved in this event and yeah this really really looks great so yeah let's just dive into this shall we Fragments of glass, rusted coins beneath the mantelpiece, slips of writing written, drifting bottles, ink blots covering the page, half scattered dandelions, mysteriously encrypted data on a hard drive, misshapen bones from a dig site, waterfalls that freeze over in the winter, animal shaped clouds drifting in the wind, malfunctioning wires from an abandoned warehouse, the radio signs from late night forest drives. 2 a.m. airport visits, briskness in the autumn air, gazing out at city nightlife from my window, the sudden awareness that nothing makes sense anymore. What a way to start off this multimedia experience than with refraction pulls. So first I'm going to go through the story and how well written it is and I'm just going to put a disclaimer, I've never reviewed a story before on my channel and I'm honestly going to say I don't know what points to actually like, give a review on. <laughs> it's really really hard because, oh my god, this is so so well written, this might be one of the best uh, stories I've heard in a... I've, Sorry, I've read in a while. <laughs> wow. The use of words here is fantastic. And it's written in a sort of a poem way. And a oh, holy shit, I'm just impressed. This. I could never write something on this level. I'm just genuinely impressed of how well written this is. And I think I grasped the message pretty well and honestly i think it might need a few more re like reads to actually get the full message but so far frost forms you get a big thumbs up from me this is actually so damn impressive now we want to the art made by lean lemon keeper and sloan and it represents the story quite well the shrouded figures and actually the details in this artwork it's phenomenal i especially enjoy the different skies that we see there's one that's more cloudy and somewhat more at night time it quite fits well it's a damn great piece of art excellent job there and we move on to the actual song Crafted by Childbirth, Convexity, Keva, Pixando, XVNA, and Kuatari, which is formerly Rocket Box, which has made a really, really great EP, if you missed it. And, uh, wow, it's absolutely gorgeous. The 
verses are really really well crafted with some great vocal uh, interludes i'm not really sure what was said there it's kind of hard to decipher but honestly it fit quite well then we move on to the drops there's one that's more melodic it's really punchy impactful with some solid melodies and then we move on to the heavier one which is just face melting and hard hitting it's a really really great blend of everyone's style here and the outro is equally as gorgeous it's an impressive piece of music and also one of the best that i've heard from every producer here um i did not expect that i mostly know about convexity and pixandal here and yeah i honestly gonna say this is one of convexity's best work to date I'm generally just impressed. Everyone here killed it. It's a really great collaboration of everyone's style. So yeah, honestly, big thumbs up for Refraction Pulse. Everything here just clicked with me. It's a great way to start off Storybook. And yeah, let's just move on to piece number two. A short, fantastical, queer tale about the moon, the stars, and the little blue planet they oversee. Every night the moon guides her stars in granting wishes. It's a thankless job, and one that given them a particular reputation in their stellar neighborhood. But they enjoy nothing more than empowering earthlings, if only because there's something about helping those smaller than you that's so fulfilling. When a stray comet bursts into the scene, jeering about how the moon and her stars waste precious time and energy on tiny, useless parasites, the moon is more than happy to set them straight. So, about Moon to Comet. Well, honestly, I really enjoyed reading through this story. It's a more dialogue based one compared to the first one which was more of a poem and honestly uh, the interactions between the moon and the comet was actually pretty pretty interesting honestly another really well written piece with some really great character development and really really nice world building honestly i want to read more of this yeah <laughs> it's so damn good and the art excellently represents the story with the moon, with the smaller comet, and the girl at the beginning that we're talking about, which oversee the earth, which is represented as a sort of sphere. And since it's at nighttime, it's darker. Honestly, just an art piece that perfectly encapsulates the synopsis of the story. Now about the song, S sorry I'm just going to credit the story writer fairy thing and the visuals from Icarus Cube, Moon Jelly, and Nestlosity. I just forgot to do that. The music now is composed by Audrey Oliveria, Catnaps, I'd Rather Not, Winter Color, and Winter Foe. And to start off, I'm just going to talk about the progression of the tune, which starts off in a sort of little joyful, not really chip tuny, but kind of sounding straight from a video game sort of uh, intro, which then transitions to something that's more uh, gorgeous, more melodic, uh, more celestial, actually, which feels really well actually i'm going to rephrase that it actually really fits with the story as it starts off with the moon and the sort of girl that we're talking about uh, at first or maybe i just haven't interpreted it well let me know in the comments if i did a mistake and then transitions into the story about more the moon and the comet 
and yeah, that's perfectly represented in the music, and then we're led to a more acoustic uh, track with some electronic elements and some really really great vocals from who I assume is Audrey. I really recognize the uh, like the, the vocal delivery here, and honestly, Audrey songwriting is absolutely top-notch and it fits quite well with the story and I've always liked Cat Naps and Winter Colors production so that was also a hit. I don't know a lot about Oliveria, I'd rather not and Winter Foe. I'm gonna check out more of their stuff later but I'm sure they did an excellent job here. Yeah, okay. Solid track, solid visuals, solid story. Another killer storybook piece. So yeah, only positive praise for this one. Great job. Dubbed the City of Crowns, New Amaran is a skyscraper city under the iron grip of the garrison. Their military presence doesn't sit well with those living on the ground, or rather what's left of them. A group of scientists who defected from the garrison long ago built the perfect vigilante to protect the vulnerable Mirren Vanna. A young woman with a bright smile and new androids so Andrew it, but the latter might not be true. Not anymore. Phantom Limbs! Actually, so far, probably my favorite story. I'm a big fan of these sort of dystopian city stories, and this just clicked with me instantly. I really, really hope that this might be a series, because as an introduction to this dystopian world, it's actually goddamn great, the world building is just stellar, and I really really enjoy the characters here as well. Honestly, just gonna say this so far, Avalon, best story, solid stuff, I wanna read more of this. And then we get visuals from Devon, RGX, and XY, and... Well, see, uh, there's a no this cat thing that makes sense as it's represented in the story, but I do wish that maybe the art would have represented maybe the dystopian world that the character, the android character, uh, lives in. It, it works well, the art really works well, and it kind of has a sort of cyberpunk vibe to it. But I wish it had a bit more. It's good, but I, I don't feel it represents the full story quite effectively. And then we get the song from Plig, GPE Bro, Storyboard, Christian Hayward, Kiriku, and Snowstorm. And wow! <laughs> yeah, okay, if I thought the visuals didn't quite fit the story effectively, the, the music definitely does. With some gritty, almost mid-tempo, cyberpunk vibe to it, and I can definitely hear storyboard influence here, and play with some little melodic plucks, and Christian provides some really really good vocals that again fit the story really really well honestly i just wish the song was a bit longer i feel like maybe it could have benefited from another drop but honestly that's just me just feel like the show is just way too short i was really really enjoying this so overall some excellent story excellent music uh not a big fan of the visuals though i'm i'm sorry it just could have been a bit more that's all. Still, excellent job here. Yeah.
a realm inhabited by watchful eyes in the mist, a novelty they dare call a wanderer, describes them as hollow. Their sentiment towards the self calls side characters measures only up to apathy. Those words in trial by the wanderer's fate put in the beautiful depictions of words to read from a wounded form, and love the belief of this so-called wanderer that others fail to feel in a world built from an all's own fault. Only another day has passed. Still, after all, in front of the wanderer's stained, unpleasant, regretful nightmare, does this belief still dare to survive? This story, the only response, was written by Spectral Morph, and yeah, it's a, it's a really, really interesting story, and definitely one that I want to read more from. It might take a few reads to actually grasp the entire message around this story. But I think I understand it pretty well. And yeah, okay. World building, story writing, on point. Yeah, that's a solid story. Definitely loving it. Good job. And then we get visuals from 1 trillion MPH Graphic Slayer and Rizzle. And uh, yeah, fits quite well. With the vines and the masks that are described in the story quite represents well the character of Autumn. Yeah, I don't know what else to really say, it's just really really well drawn. Yeah, and then we get music from 3125, Sub-001 and the Hulk, which is very hard hitting with some beautiful soaring melodies and some Amazing drops. Sub Zero Zero One is really a producer to be on the lookout for, really digging their stuff. And this is no exception. I don't know much about 3125 and Hope, but I'll, I'll definitely seek out their material. I don't really have much else to say about this one. Solid across the board again. Yeah. A young, self-centered writer who's just moved to a new country finds that the great novel she'd been working on for years doesn't match up well to criticism and in a breakdown finds solace at the beach in conversation with someone about the perils of trying to achieve a goal much bigger than you and learns to get out of her own head. And this synopsis is actually well representative of the actual story and the message behind it and yeah another very well written piece this time coming from Patrick Deitya yeah solid then good visuals from Dylan HQ Mta and Varsi and yeah it really works well you get this lady swimming in the ocean and yeah, she's very afraid of infinity and being drifted in the ocean and her dream also involved a rocket which is also represented in this artwork. I I'm quite digging this. And now the music from Hugh Kari, Noram Pusal, Kinoteki and Hiret Inc. is very melodic, very pretty, works very well too and yeah it's just a very gorgeous piece of music to accompany a very solid piece of story yeah i don't really have much else to say about this one except that y'all need to check this out because it's absolutely amazing yeah Someone is writing in a notebook. Perhaps they are quietly reflecting, giving names to their feelings and grasping them to the power of language. 
Nope, that's not it. Maybe they're writing purely for the sake of writing, losing themselves in the beauty of the written form. Definitely not. They have the vocabulary of a VA novelist and their sentences are short because writing is boring. Talking and storytelling can be fun, but when no one is listening, what is that to say? Someone is writing in a notebook. Who knows why? Their sentences are short because writing is hard. This story by MK is kind of in a diary format and yeah, works pretty well. I don't really have a ton to say about this story. It doesn't really give me a lot of material to talk about and again, I'm not the best at reviewing stories but I definitely enjoyed reading this one. But I think I enjoyed the visuals even more coming from Star Sense, The Fox Overlord and Stupid Progen. God damn wow, this is gorgeous. You get this eerie sort of manner in the background with the trees and the cryptic okay that's that's not it sorry kind of spooky looking animals I, I like it and then you get the reference to the spreadsheet mentioned in the story on the computer and yeah loving this artwork gorgeous music coming from uh, neat one okay bh all at a kiss simply an m beat uh, definitely hearing neat influences in the drop which is absolutely gorgeous and bh's vocals i assume that bh did the vocals here are absolutely yeah very lovely and tyson went with the story i don't know a ton about the other uh, musicians here so I'm sorry if I don't really know a ton about them, but they definitely had a great job here. Another absolutely killer track. I feel like I'm saying this for every track, but seriously, this might be one of the best compilations of the year so far. Because, oh my god, seriously, y'all made this in a week. This is incredible, like seriously. All these projects so far, I'm quite loving it, loving the concept, absolutely. Wow, yeah. In the final battle between purity and corruption, will the King of Darkness finally have redemption after his tragic and violent past? This story, written by Isabel Cardona, I'm just gonna be honest, maybe I have just a little bias, but this kind of fighting story just didn't click with me. I I'm sure it will with someone, and it's really well written, it's just not for me. I I'm sorry, it's no... not trying to be rude or anything. It's just not really my thing. And the visuals by OTS, Live Drawn and No Man's Dream. Uh, yeah, really represents well the fight between darkness and light. With the dark wing creature against this pure human with wand. Yeah, sorry, my main <laughs> I forgot my words there, but honestly, the star of the show here is the music coming from Aethero, Aspic, Flemos, Glass, Stardew, Viznode, and Unit, Tree Tree Tree. And I'm just in awe on how this progresses from being more of an orchestral sort of song, definitely more in, on in Toro's lane, and then it transitions to something that's heavier, that's more glitchier, that has more uh, sound design to it, that sounds more uh, like Aspect and this note, and then it becomes even more glitchy and heavy and hard-hitting, kind of like Final Boss, and then it smoothly 
transitions to something a bit lighter, a bit more orchestral. The progression here is just mind-blowing. I'm just in awe of how gorgeous this ended up being, and the combination of Aethor Aspect and Visno definitely works incredibly well. They're some of my favorite producers of the moment. Definitely looking forward to Aspect and Visno's collab album. I don't know much from the other producers, but I know a few of them participated in Aethor's last makeup collabs that were rejected from the all-nighter songs and they were all as awe-inducing as this one is. Definitely a highlight so far from Storybook because oh my god, 8 minutes, it's such a journey, S wow, <laughs> words can describe how just impressed I am of this piece of music. I'll go on the biggest adventure by myself. Then they'll see. Jason Fide's desires were still the same. With the pride of his family on his back, he took the disguise with his hoverboard in search of his self to find peace. Standing of a cliff that looked onto a vast sea, Jason remembered the loss of his great friend, a friend who smiled but took on his demons alone, a friend that would say that yourself is worth fighting for. Leaving the world that he knew, Jason continues his journey, but with renewed hope. A perfect uh, synopsis of the story, and I actually quite like the story, and it has a good message. And it kind of is a bit, uh, say, relatable. Because <laughs> I kind of feel the same way as the uh, protagonist here. So that story kind of resonated with me. And it's very well written. Definitely digging it from Dishar Monique. And then the visuals from Atlan C and Bendel! I did not know Bendel made artwork and the three came up with a very fitting artwork featuring the protagonist and his hoverboard and him looking over a vast sea and it's a really gorgeous nature. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm losing my words here, sorry. And now we get to the music from Makina, Uki, Aether Tides, Volk Sky, Kitefield, and Big Feet. And holy shit, I'm in love with this. The vocals fit so well, the lyrics are certainly based off the story, and they're very well written. The Vocal performance is gorgeous, but the main star of the show is, uh, is the production. The first job legit sounds like a cloudy sky. I got goosebumps. It's such a perfect drop with some euphoric melodies, some insane production, and then the second drop goes for more of a serene atmosphere, not really having a drop actually, it's, it's just peaceful, two minute long outro with some nice nature sounds, relaxing, chill, a perfect ending for the song. I was not expecting this, and yeah, definitely not from the artist roster here. And I definitely think that the last part is more uh, kite field inspired, mixed with uh, box guy. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe not. But it kite field so far, their discography is kind of chiller. So that would not really surprise me. And the first part definitely sounds more Aether Tides, Makina, 
big feet. And yeah. But honestly, this team up really came up with a gorgeous track. So yeah, amazing story, amazing visuals, amazing music. Another great team. The river is impossibly fast and impossibly dark. In its throes, nothing else seems to exist. But you will emerge, and when you do, you must find a way to keep going. Undercurrent! A story about how someone survived after almost drowning in a river and having to uh, climb back up the hill to become better and it's quite the journey it's a captivating story written by Latish so check this out definitely worth your time then we go to the artwork from Eblu and Foxconn which represents a part of a story uh, where a caretaker gives her a little card written you are not alone on it and a uh, chocolate bar yeah uh, kind of represents the that part of the story well I don't really know how else the art for this could have been so yeah dope artwork then we get to the music from the diabolical waffle dove Schuster, Liska, scared cat and star dreams I feel like I'm repeating myself, but oh my god, y'all made some amazing music. Dome's more cinematic. Sound design certainly is present here, and the drop here is very bouncy and really fun to listen to. The vocals also fit well, and the last part with more calming and nature sounds represents the ending of the story effectively. So yeah. Another, uh, yeah, another really great piece. I'm digging this. Y'all, y'all did a great job. Wow, I'm impressed. The year is 2190. Civilization has progressed smoothly over the century. Robots have been optimized for everyday use and the humans are finding reasons to use them for every possible task. The large task of preserving nature has long been put to the side, abandoned by humans when technology took over everyone's life entirely. They delegated the massive job to only one robot. Robots weren't built to think, but being out in nature for so long made it more man than metal. Now the robot finds itself to be nature's guardian. Uh, this story, written by Fighter, might be one of my favorites. Uh, it progresses in such a great way that the robot starts to have more sentience and becomes, yeah, more man than machine. It's incredibly detailed, really great world building, very well written, amazing story. Yeah, I want to read more of this. But yeah beautiful and that also can be applied to Bubin S. Sturtley's and Hilly Afaro's artwork it's absolutely gorgeous I love the little robot it looks so cute it looks in the river the reflection a perfect uh, encapsulation of a certain scene in the story I just love this art man it kind of reminds me of Glacier's art works but in another sort of art style and then we get to the music from Juko, Robo, Wish Lane, Mr. The Lighthouse and Foley. Very gorgeous and it works really well and has kind of more uh, nature inspired sounds it certainly kind of fits and sort of a large scale uh, sort of video game with a beautiful landscapes and all 
I don't know if that makes sense, but anyways, this is a very lovely piece of music. And really good outro for a storybook, honestly. So yeah, I'm a fan of this as well. Okay, yeah, I'm really, really a fan of this concept. The writers all did a great job, the artists too, and the music. Oh, wow. I'm a fan of every song here, seriously. Every artist here absolutely nailed it. It's such a great concept, and I hope we maybe see a part two of this because... Yeah, this is phenomenal. I, I think I already made it clear with every single review of every piece that, wow, mm, I'm in awe. Everyone here did a great job, and even though I didn't like every detail here, yeah, still, excellent job. Wow, yeah, so... Thank you, Form, for organizing this amazing multimedia event, and really great job to everyone that participated. And yeah, I, I like this. Check this out if you have time. It's definitely worth it. I'll put a link in the description to read all the stories and stream all the music. And all the songs are also available on every streaming platform and YouTube. And that's gonna be it for me in this long video. Thanks for watching everyone. It took me a little while to make this video, so I'd appreciate a little thumbs up for the support. And yeah, that's yeah. That's it. Uh thanks for watching and I'll see y'all in the next video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.